Super Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time will always be landmarks in my childhood. Each offered a vast world to explore with different abilities at your disposal to aid you in your quest. Seeing as Ocarina of Time was built with a heavily tweaked version of the Super Mario 64 engine, perhaps it's more the nostalgia that makes them seem to go hand in hand with each other. While they were both built from the ground up on a similar platform, how would things change if the worlds were to collide? How would Mario fare in the land of Hyrule, and how difficult would it be for Link to save Peach? Would Mario excel where Link had trouble? Would Link make short work of Mario's adversaries? Well, why don't we take a look? With Mario's extreme athletic ability and his cartoon physics on his side, navigating the land of Hyrule wouldn't be too difficult at all. In fact, he could skip a lot of obstacles in the game. With his jumping abilities, things would be a breeze. Link would definitely have a bit of trouble with some jumps in Super Mario 64. Without a Kuko to aid him in distance, he would probably often fall short on some longer jumps. Although the hover boots would definitely lend a helping hand. The hook shot, assuming it's still lashed onto grippable objects, would be another defining factor in Link's quest. If it still worked, it could offer him plenty of shortcut options. Hypothetically, if you can hookshot items like gold Skulltula tokens, then you could probably use a hookshot to grab a star too. In terms of water, Mario wouldn't have to worry about needing various scales to dive deeper. He would have more difficulty with underwater puzzles and deeper dives though, since he would be unable to replenish his air. Link, on the other hand, would excel in water-based environments. Not only can he hold his breath for a lot longer, but with Iron Boots and the Zora Tunic, the perils of water are no longer a problem. In addition, his Fire Tunic would also half the damage he would take from the fire perils that are throughout the Mario universe. By far, the biggest benefit Link would have over Mario is the amount of health he has. Assuming we go by end of game standards, Link would have 20 hearts. If we compare Link's upgrade defense bonus that you get at the end of the game against Mario while he's wearing his hat, there is a huge health difference. Link would have 10 times the amount of health Mario has. In the Zelda universe, Mario would only have two hearts. That pretty much means he's a one-hit wonder for an iron knuckle. However, Mario would be able to restore health by resurfacing in any pool of water. And perhaps by also collecting rupees since he restores health by collecting currency in his own respective game. In terms of combat, Link again has the edge. With the ability to shoot from afar, he would make quick work of Irock, his Mario 64 Bongo Bongo counterpart, and a lot of other enemies. Chuck Jaws might very well be the bane of Link's existence, due to needing to be thrown to be defeated, but with the ability to Z-target enemies, Link might be able to avoid their charge without needing Mario's mad hops. Skills aside, there are still some major flaws in each character that would probably prevent them from advancing at some point. Rainbow Ride and Tick Tock Clock would be an absolute nightmare for Link, and so would the collapsing staircases in the Bowser levels. With some luck, and only needing to gather 70 stars total, it would probably still be possible for Link to finish the game. This is only assuming that Link is capable of climbing poles like he can ladders, and the same goes for Mario. That, and Link might have to get pretty creative when trying to jump into some paintings. Mario would definitely have a more difficult time navigating through the complexity of puzzles that Ocarina of Time has. If he could utilize any equipment acquired in the game, then he could surely finish it and slay Ganon. However, with his basic skill set, he would get hung up on many puzzles. For example, without the ability to create fire, which Mario can normally do, but not in Super Mario 64, Mario would not be able to solve the torch puzzles that are typically needed to open doors. This puts Mario in a pinch in several places, and that's not even factoring in all the uses that Ocarina has in the game. With that said, although the environments in Super Mario 64 would be brutal for Link to traverse, he would still have a chance of finishing his quest and saving Peach. Mario, on the other hand, depending on what tools he is capable of using, may not be able to save Zelda after all. Hyrule becomes flooded, there are now trains everywhere, and the Hero Shade now teaches you how to U-turn flip. Because that's how the Zelda timeline works, right? Kidding aside, what are your thoughts on this game swap? Can you recall any moments where each hero would excel or struggle? Will Link pull out all his hair in frustration due to these insane jumps? Will Mario fall asleep and dream of Italian cuisine during his most dire of moments? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks again for joining us on our world-meshing trek into the past. 
If you'd like to join us on your YouTube voyage and watch some more game colliding content, then the subscribe button is just what you need, because it's too dangerous to go alone. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until our next video, cheers. Probably one of the most terrifying experiences from my childhood involved having to get the Sun Song in Ocarina of Time. I watched my older brother lead the charge on this endeavor, but we never expected something so frightening to be lurking in the crypts below.